Okay, well, welcome to Wednesday, April the 21st. Um, let's just go ahead and go to our folders. I want you guys to take out this paper. Um, so we covered, this was uh, last Friday, that was the 9th. And we covered function notation. We covered this lesson yesterday, domain and range, to just grade it. We are covering this today, so let's go ahead and we're going to go to Bob's test number three, and then we're going to go right into the slope and rate of change worksheet. Okay, so you need to go to Bob's test number two. I'm sorry, Bob's test number three. <laughs> this is what we did yesterday. Um, there we go. Okay, Bob's test number three. And again, Bob's name this time is B-dubs. So we're going to look at B-dubs test. We're going to read through each of the following problems and analyze the work that Bob did. We need to be prepared to agree or disagree, just like we did yesterday with his answers, and prove whether or not he is right or wrong. If he's wrong, we're going to correct his mistakes. So the question says, which coordinate pair is the solution set for y is less than 1 minus 6x? Okay, so let's think about what we know about inequalities. This less than sign will tell us that we're in a shade below. Okay. And... It also means that because it's not equal to, it is a solid line. I'm sorry. Because it is a solid line, it means that it is, um, I mean, because there's no equal to on, on it, we should have a dashed line, right? There's no equal to. It's not less than or equal to. It's just less than. So it should be a dashed line. So Bob messed up there. So let's go ahead and correct that. Um, and we're trying to figure out what is 1 minus 6x. So remember, we're still doing y equals mx plus b. We're still going to use that slope in intercept form. And so we can redo this to say y is less than negative 6x plus 1. Let's just rewrite this to show this. That's easier for us to graph. So now that tells us that my, my m is negative 6, that's my slope, and my b is 1. So we're going to put a dot at b, we're going to start at our b, dot at b, and it goes down 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and over 1. And there's another dot, okay? So right in there, okay? So which coordinate pair is a solution set for y is less than 1 minus 6x? So that's the correct line. It needs to be dashed. Um, we need to figure out which one of these is in that zone is what that means. That would be a solution set. Um, so 1, 0 is A. It's not in there. So it's not A. B. B is not in there. So that's not right. C, 0, 1, that's right on that line, okay? It's on the line. And, and notice that it doesn't say, it says less than, not less than or equal to. It would have to be less than or equal to to be on the line. I really don't think that's it. Let's try D, negative 1, positive 1. I'm sorry, negative 1, positive 1. Negative 1x, positive 1. So we're about right here. Actually, this is our best choice. D. Okay. So because it's not equal to, it cannot be on the line. So it's, um, um, it's going to be D. Number 2. What is the solution to the system of the equations below? Okay. So 
He has these two equations. You're trying to figure out what x and what y are. So remember we had substitution. Um, we could put them in y equals and see put them in our calculators where they cross. So let's see what he does here. Um, he rewrites this up here. Okay, so he's trying to get y by itself on that first one. Let's see how he does here. 4 minus 7y is negative 2. Okay, so far he's copied it correctly. He's going to move his negative his 4x to the other side by subtracting it. That's correct. When he does that, it gets rid of the x's here. He's left with negative 7y 7, 7 equals negative 4x minus 2. So this is correct. Um, then he's going to divide everything by negative 7. Okay. So then he gets y equals negative 4 divided by negative 7. That makes both things positive, so that's true. Um, positive 2 over positive 7. That's true. Okay. Let's see what he does here. He tries to get, he get, he's trying to get these and this and y equals 2. So uh, now he's rewritten this over here. And he's going to get y by itself. So he's going to move the 12 over, minus 12x. That's correct. When he does that, he's left with negative 21y equals negative 12x minus 42. So far, so good. And then, then he needs to divide off the negative 21. So he's going to say divide this by 21, by this by 20, negative 21, divide that by negative 21. And now he's left with just y equals okay, negative 12 divided by 21, negative 21. Well, the negatives are going to cancel. That's true. And does he get 4 over 7? Yeah, because it, they're both divisible by 3. You can simplify this fraction to 4 over 7. So, but divisible by 3, 12 divided by 3 is 4, 21 divided by 3 is 7, x. And then these make positives because they're both plot, uh, negatives. And then 42 divided by 21 is a 2. So that's correct. Okay. So now what you could do here is you could either put this in your calculator or he just has graphed it. So we have two lined. And I don't have my calculator. I'm filming this from home. So what I want you guys to do right now is to put both of these into y equals. This is your y1 and this is your y2. And then I want you to graph it. If these are both parallel, then where, where they cross is going to be your solution. I can tell you right now, they're both going to be parallel because they both have the same slope. Same slope equals parallel lines. And remember, we, parallel is this symbol. So they're never going to cross. There is no solution. Bob was B-dubs was correct. Okay, let's look at number three. Points three, two, and seven, two are on the graphs of both quadratic functions f and g. The graph of f opens downward and the graph of g opens upwards. Which of these statements are true? He says, no clue. How do I do this? Okay, so we know these points are on there. We have these x's and these y's, right? Um, graph F opens up and graph or opens down. And so let's say this is 3, 2, and this is 7, 2, okay? You see that? Okay. Um, and then, all right. And then graph G opens upwards. So it would be like this. G, F. Okay. And, they, and it has those lines on it. So let's look at the choices. Graphs of F and G have the same axis of symmetry. Yes, that seems to be true. 
graphs of f and g have the same x-intercepts. Where are they crossing the x-axis? Um, that's probably not true because that's at 2. Um, this is your x-axis right here. If this is y, they're, they're not going to cross the same. No, that's not true. Graph at F has a minimum, a maximum point. Yes, graph F has a maximum. And graph G has a minimum. That's true. And the graph of F is the result of a reflection of the graph of G across the x-axis. They're not reflecting across the x-axis. That's not true. So I would say 1 and 3, D. Okay? Number 4, which is expression is equivalent to this? Ooh, let's think about our exponent rules, okay? Our exponent rules is p man, ds, power to power, multiply, multiply, add, add, when you have adding exponents, you do nothing. When you divide, you subtract, okay? Those are our rules, remember? So we have za times zb. When you're multiplying exponents, you add them. So you have za plus b over z, c. So that's step one. Step two is this division. So you have z a plus b minus c. Right, you're going to end up subtracting c. So z a plus b minus c is what's happening there when you subtract because you're dividing. So C would be correct. Got that one right. Okay. All right. So let's move on. Let's move on to put that in your uh, folders, please. We're going to move on to this calculating slope and rate of change. Number one says the graph of the linear function y equals f of x passes through the points 1, 2, and 5, negative 1. What is the rate of change of y with respect to x? Okay, so rate of change of y, so the change in y, y minus y over x minus x is what we're figuring out here. The change in y over the change in x. So we have x and y, x and y. Okay, so y minus y would be 2 minus negative 1, y minus y, divided by x minus x, 1 minus 5. So 2 minus negative 1 is a 2 plus 1, which is 3, and then 1 minus 5 is a negative 4. So negative 3 fourths B. The table models the change in the value of a linear function f of x as x increases. What is the rate of change? So what you need to do in your calculators, the rate of change is your slope. Okay. So to figure this out, you need to go to your calculators. You need to do stat, edit, put in your L1 and your L2s. L1s are your x's, your L2s are your y's, and then you're going to stat, calc, woo, stat over to calc, option 4, and then enter 5 times. Okay. So after you do those things, it's going to give you your A, which is your slope. Whatever your slope is, you need to put in the bubbles. Okay. So pause the video right now and let's do, why don't you do that by yourself and put your answers in. When you're ready, you can join me on number three. Number three, the tables are lined up end-to-end -end in a restaurant. The number of people who can be seated is y, is a linear function of the tables of x. A graph of the function passes through the points 320 and 532. What is the rate of change in y with respect to x per table? So we're doing, again, y minus y over x minus x. Um, this is your x, this is your y, x, and y. So we're going to subtract those. We get 
20 minus 32 over 3 minus 5. All right, y minus y over x minus x. So you have 20 minus 32 is a negative 12. 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. And when you simplify that, you get a positive 6. So there, we'll do that one together. And I want you to do number five, I mean number four, the same way as you did number two. Okay. Um, on the back, we're going to change a y as, okay, so you'll do this the same as you did same as number three. Um, but you're gonna you're gonna have to put the points here. Here's a point that's zero negative five, and then here's another point, and that is four two. So here's your x's and your y's, and you can go ahead and oops, I'm sorry, you could not see that. My bad. Do this number five the same as number three, and you're gonna have to put your own points there. So here are your coordinates. So y minus y over x minus x. All right, these notes down. Don't solve it right now. You can go back and do that in a little bit. Let's go to number six. The equation 2x minus 3y equals 6 models the relationship between x and y. What is the rate of change of y with respect to x? So rate of change is the same thing as slope. Okay, so all you need to do just put this in y equals, get it equal to y, and whatever comes before the x, that is your slope. That is your rate of change. So set this equal to y, and whatever number is in front of the x, when you set it equal to y, is going to be your rate of change. Number seven, write those notes. You can go back and solve it. Number seven, the grass in the backyard grows at a constant rate. The, co the graph shows the change in y, the length of grass in inches, and a function of x, the number of weeks the grass has been growing. So you're going to do number seven the same as number five. You're going to need to find your points. Number eight, the amount of recipe in uh, sugar in between, the, the rate of change between sugar and flour in a recipe. So here's your function, set it equal to y, get it in y equals, y equals mx plus b, whatever ends up being in front of your x after you get it equal to y is going to be your slope. Number nine, same thing, same as number seven, find two points. Get the coordinate points there and then subtract your x's and your y's. And um, that's, I want you to do um, the rest. I want you to do number 10. You're going to see a, a pattern here. They're going to be very similar. Once you do one, you can do um, 11 and 12. And that's all you need to do for this. You don't need to do 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, or 18. Once you do go through number 12 and answer all those, then you're finished. We are going to be grading this tomorrow in class. So we'll see you then.